Hey and welcome, I'm Hammy. In this vid we're taking a look at Overwatch Halloween's 2017 freshly released mini-comic, The Return of Junkenstein. Now this is a tapestry or mini-comic, very much like the one we had for Winston for Year of the Rooster. As a result it's four pages and a seasonal one, so it's not lore or story as such, more a nice bit of fun and background to the in-game event. As a result, instead of doing my usual comic analysis, I'll simply do a little reading of the comic myself and then go through a few nice details in it and the art that I enjoyed. Link to the comic is in the pinned comment below if you want to read along. Okay, here we go with our Halloween story. Doom descended upon Adlersbrunn. Dr. Jameson Junkenstein's lust for revenge had spilled into every street and engulfed the village in a sea of terror. Yet, as the town seemed lost, they appeared. Four wanderers who had travelled from distant lands to vanquish the darkness. When their grim work was done, the Doctor's mad laughter haunted the village no longer. The wanderers vanished as suddenly as they had appeared. The stories of their valour would live on, but the peace they had brought to Adlersbrunn would not. Dr. Junkenstein was but the pawn of a greater power, the one known as the Witch of the Wilds. She would not abandon her fallen servant, not while his debt to her remained unpaid. Her forbidden magic breathed the spark of life back into Dr. Junkenstein's cold heart. Death had not slaked his thirst for chaos, nor had it dimmed his devious mind. He laboured to remake his infernal army, mightier and more terrible than ever before. The noble Lord of Adlersbrunn was helpless to stop Dr. Junkenstein's rampage. The only hope he had to save his village lay far beyond its walls. The winds carried his plea far and wide, first to a legendary Viking craftsman who had fought beside the Lord of Adlersbrunn in days long past. He could not ignore the call of an old friend no more than he could resist spilling the blood of a new foe. On and on the ravens flew, even to the misty lakeside manor where the Countess dwelled. It was said that she felt no warmth, no cold, no joy and no sorrow. The only thing that stirred in her heart was an unending hunger, but whether it was that that caused her to seek out Adlersbrunn, none could say. Stranger still were the monk and his apprentice, the swordsman. Where they had met and why they had agreed to travel together are tales for another day, but it is said that they answered to a foreboding presence, a force beyond mortal understanding. Across land and sea, by foot and by hoof they came, for they were in number, like the wanderers of old. Trust would not come easy, but they would need it to survive the horrors that the witch had in store. For she had at her side a faithful servant named the Reaper, and she had called upon a monstrous new ally, the Summoner, who wielded the power of an ancient dragon. Bound to the witch's will by pacts forged in blood, they were called to the battle and pledged not to rest until they had destroyed Adlersbrunn once and for all. And so, the endless night began. Okay, that was the story. On to some of the nice little details that I saw. Well, Grey Shuko, the artist who's also done the Going Legit Junkenstein comic from last year and Uprising comics, packed loads of cool little touches in here. From the unending, almost conga line of Omnix that goes across the page, giving the unending feeling. I really like the silhouettes on the castle walls behind the Junkenstein panel here. You can see, of course, the original four, the soldier, the alchemist, the gunslinger and the archer. In the Torbjorn panel when the Viking is being called, it's got a very World of Warcraft feel to me. The background almost feels like the Kazmadan sort of dwarven starting area in that game. Love the Widowmaker panel, the misty lakeside manor very much feels like Chateau Guillard, of course, Widowmaker's home and the deathmatch level in Overwatch. Is that blood she's drinking, that red stuff in the glass? Probably a vampire and it also would explain, as a lot of you have said, why McCree is on the hunt for her. There's a new piece of commentary by Reinhardt in Junkenstein's Revenge saying that Long had the gunslinger pursued the Countess, but their battle would wait for another day. And as you look very carefully in the background as Widowmaker rides away from the manor, you can see, yep, that's Van Helsing McCree behind a tree, on the hunt for sure. I love the Genji and Sinyata panel. I'd love to hear that tale told another day, the wandering stories of Master and Apprentice. This alternative universe fun storytelling of the cultist monk and his Ronin style Genji swordsman companion. I can see the calls for this to be a skin for Genji ringing out across the internet already. Same for the Lord of Adlersbrunn for Reinhardt, I'm sure. 
Also, just a nice little detail, in the final panel, the Witch of the Wilds, of course, is in the background as you see the various allies of Junkenstein and the Witch lined up. But look at the separator between the panels. It's dark and swept across to look like the brim of her witch's hat, which I think is just a really cool little detail. There we go, that's the new mini comic. Did you enjoy it? How are you enjoying the event so far? And are you enjoying Junkenstein's Endless? Got any of the skins you're wanting? Do let me know in the comments. I will have lore of the skins videos for the skins in this event coming up in the next few days and over the next week. If you enjoyed the vid, do throw a like, subscribe or comment. It really does help me out and check out my Overwatch comic and lore analysis and explanations as well as interactions and voice lines from the heroes and game in my playlist here. Cheers for tuning in. I've been Hammy. Take it easy.